Hi, I'm Tyler Fultz. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response to capital projects. I don't claim to know everything there is to know nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you like this video, please hit the like button down below, and go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you would like to know when more videos are coming. If you didn't like this video, please let me know down in the comments. I'm always looking to improve. If you have any other suggestions of um, videos you'd like me to react to or topics you want me to talk about, please let me know down in the comments. Today we're going to look at another one of Kurzgesagt's videos called Worst Nuclear Accidents in History. Let's take a look. It's an uneasy feeling of danger for many people. Ancient and dangerous minerals are concentrated to awaken seemingly unnatural powers. Here they go with the green mysterious glow and all the green clouds. One thing I do want to point out is as part of my training in the nuclear industry, we actually took a class that covered every single nuclear accident in history. It only lasted a couple hours because there weren't all that many. Creating horribly toxic elements that if they escape, can and have killed people in horrible ways. How many people has nuclear energy killed and how? <laughs> Good visualization of the fear, an unfounded fear. Nuclear energy has been a thing since 1951. And since then, there have been around 30 reported accidents globally. Most of them were pretty minor compared to the two disasters everybody is familiar with, Fukushima and Chernobyl. Chernobyl... Interesting that they did not mention Three Mile Island, but Three Mile Island, there was no radioactive release to the public, no deaths. That's probably why they didn't mention it. It's undoubtedly the worst nuclear accident in history for a number of reasons. The reactor technology was old and ill-prepared for emergencies, and the government response was slow and more concerned about it. One thing I'd point out even more so, it wasn't just the faulty cooling system. They had no containment structure, no fail-safes in place, and they defeated what little safety systems they had in place during that crazy test they did. I'll probably do another video on just Chernobyl by itself. ...than damage control. Still, only 31 people died directly in the accident. But what makes nuclear energy scary is not reactors blowing up, but the radiation they release. So the real question is how many deaths through cancer and other diseases will Chernobyl cause? Here, things get really complicated because you dip right into controversy and just discussing the different estimates and how they were calculated... I love Kurz Gazat's animations. <laughs> ...of a video of its own. The most pessimistic estimate comes from a study commissioned by the European Green Party and projects up to 60,000 premature deaths by the year 2065. Most scientific studies come up with numbers much lower than this. The WHO has estimated that in total, the long-term death toll will be around 4,000. While the UN Scientific Committee on the Effects of Atomic Radiation concluded that even this figure could be too high. For more details on this, check our research document. The second big One interesting thing about that is what they're looking at and how they get those numbers, they're looking at probabilities of increased early death due to cancers and stuff and how that could possibly be attributed to radiation. So as they said, it's a little sketchy in terms of how they can actually fingerprint where they got their cancer from. So not completely accurate and that would explain the range. The accident was Fukushima Daiichi in 2011. Fukushima did not only operate with much better technology that was less dangerous in the first place, much better security measures were in place, and the official response was fast and decisive. And so the current death toll is only 573. The major difference here is that these deaths were not a consequence of radiation. They were indirect deaths from the stress of the evacuation of the areas around the reactors and occurred almost entirely in older populations. Estimates of the possible long-term deaths from ready. People forget to mention it's not just from the nuclear plant. When they mention Fuk Fukushima, it was the massive 9.0 earthquake that caused all kinds of deaths and all kinds of undue stress. 
written very widely, from none at all to about 1,000. In terms of the other long-term consequences, an increase in thyroid cancer in children has been observed, but according to the WHO, this is related to the increased screening rates. By 2018, there had been only one confirmed death. What actually causes the thyroid cancer increased risk is an isotope of iodine, which gets uptaken into the thyroids. That's why thyroids during a release is one of the areas of concern for uh, increased rates of cancer. Workers as a result of radiation-induced lung cancer. Now, let's compare this to renewable energy. Solar wind and geothermal energy basically only cause deaths as a result of construction and maintenance accidents. Unfortunately, their current share of global energy is pretty low. The major player in renewable energy is hydropower, which mostly means building dam. I have to point out on their chart, um, they showed nuclear being a brighter green than renewables. So that means nuclear is more green than renewables. Chris Gazat was here first <laughs> with that claim. <laughs> Letting water flow through turbines from a higher elevation to a lower elevation. In total, hydro has been the most fatal in terms of accidents, with hundreds of thousands of deaths in the last half century. One accident clearly stands out, the 1975 Bankau hydroelectric dam failure in China, which has striking similarities to Chernobyl. Old technology, poor design and poor management by authoritarian governments concerned about appearances. In a nutshell, a massive typhoon triggered intense flooding that destroyed the dam and, subsequently, a number of smaller dams in a chain reaction, unleashing a flood of over 15 billion cubic meters of water in total. Kilometer-wide waves as high as buildings devastated thousands of square kilometers of countryside and countless communities. All in all, the death toll from just this one accident and its direct consequences is estimated to lie between 85,000 to 240,000. But all of these deaths caused by nuclear and renewable energy are actually negligible in comparison to the real killer energy source, fossil fuel, the most widely used source of energy and electricity. When we burn fossil fuels to heat up water and make turbines spin, or to cause mini explosions to move cars with internal combustion engines, gases like ozone, sulfur dioxide... Interesting, so they're lumping in transport with this, okay. ...monoxide and nitrogen dioxide are released into the atmosphere. Breathing in these gases disrupts lung function, which aggravates chronic conditions like asthma and bronchitis, and causes a wide range of respiratory and cardiovascular diseases. But even more dangerous is the fine particle pollution burning fossil fuels causes. A mixture of solid and liquid droplets of poisonous substances as small as 2.5 micron. So here's the kicker. Um, this particulate matter that gets released, there are more radioisotopes because some of this stuff has radioactivity just by natural abundance. But because they release so many emissions, you're gonna get more radiation dose from fossil plants than you ever would from a nuclear plant. It's a diameter. They easily find their way deep into your lungs and increase the risk of deadly diseases like lung cancer, stroke, and heart disease. Fossil fuel-related air pollution is the number one cause of environmental-related deaths in the world. According to the WHO, it accounts for 29% of all cases of lung cancer. 17% of deaths from acute lower respiratory infection, 24% from stroke, 25% from ischemic heart disease, and 43% from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. All in all, outside air pollution adds up to the deaths of 4 million people each year. What makes air pollution especially problematic and sinister is the fact that the damage it causes happens very gradually, which makes it hard for our brains that didn't evolve with subtle dangers in mind to realize the scope of the problem. The irony is that's the same sort of principle, something latent that takes a very long time, both when looking at the nuclear accidents, and those were accidents, very rare um, occurrences. They only mentioned two uh, in this video that had any real impact. And it, whereas this fossil fuel is uh, constant as long as they're operating. I like how they put things in perspective. Collectively, air pollution from fossil fuels 
is estimated to have killed around 100 million people in the past 50 years. But wait, wow. is that really fair? Fossil fuels also provide over 80% of global energy, so it makes sense that they cause the most deaths. So let's compare deaths per energy unit. That's a great way to do it. Let's take a look. Deaths per energy unit produce. A few studies have compared the death rates from different energy sources per one terawatt hour. That's about the <laughs> annual energy consumption of 27,000 EU citizens, or 12,600 US citizens. To produce that much energy for one year, coal causes 25 deaths, oil causes 18, and natural gas 3. Renewable energy causes one death every few decades. And nuclear, in the worst case, nuclear energy would cause one death every 14 years. One study... I love how they compared everything like that. That's a very good way to visualize it. ...and found that nuclear energy actually saved 2 million lives between 1971 and 2009 by displacing fossil fuels from the global energy mix. The numbers are clear. Even when using wildly pessimistic numbers, Nuclear energy is among the safest forms of energy generation, and at a time when we're struggling to slow down rapid climate change, it's a really valuable low-carbon option. However, all these facts still leave one major argument that is fielded against nuclear power. Opponents of nuclear energy argue that nuclear waste and its lack of long-term storage solutions is an unacceptable problem and risk, while proponents of nuclear energy say that until renewable energies are able to cover the complete energy demands of mankind, it's arguably safer to store nuclear waste for the time being than to inhale poisonous gases and promote rapid climate change. That's true. Detailed discussion about nuclear waste would go too far here, or about it in our sources. Let us know if you'd like a whole video about it. So looking at the comparative death rates, it's a bit concerning that some countries are replacing nuclear energy with fossil fuels, mostly coal. Especially Germany and Japan have been the most active in dismantling their nuclear fleet. In a this video is a little dated now. Um, more recently, um, Germany is reconsidering extending the, the uh, lifespan of their of their nuclear fleet and go and going back to it as this. As of this time, it was through 2023, which isn't very long, but I'm confident it'll get looked at for a more uh, longer-term vision. Nuclear plants certainly have been capable of lasting a lot longer. To appease the public, the German government shut down 11 of its 17 nuclear facilities and plans to close the remaining reactors in 2022. The immediate gap in energy production was filled by temporarily increasing coal production, the energy source with the largest health impacts and the worst consequences for climate. As well as increasing imports from Russia and considering what's going on in Russia and Ukraine right now, we're realizing that is not such a good idea. <laughs> a 2019 analysis concluded that as a consequence, the nuclear phase out has led to 1,100 avoidable deaths per year in Germany due to the increased air pollution in the years after 2010. So in conclusion, Nuclear energy feels way more dangerous than it actually is. No. That animation was perfect, showing this dark, dismal background and that green, supposedly radioactive stuff coming out of their cooling ta towers, and then what it actually looks like in that the real waste product's just water and everything's fine. <laughs> to hell you look at it, the one thing we should strive to get rid of as quickly as possible are fossil fuels to prevent the deaths they cause each year and to slow down climate change. Regardless of how much you personally care about climate change issues or which energy source you favor, saving millions of lives should be something we can all agree on. Maybe you've actually made some kind of resolution to try and be more sustainable this year. Or maybe your goals are more about you as a person and you'd like... Okay, this is going into their paid promotion. Yeah, this was a great video. I didn't really go into as much detail as I thought in terms of nuclear accidents. In fact, it only mentioned the two, um, Chernobyl and um, Fukushima. Um, within the nuclear industry, you're taught the big three. So Chernobyl, Fukushima, and Three Mile Island as the big accidents that we can all learn from and constantly improve upon and get better as the three accidents that really shape the industry. 
and made it to what it is now with the most robust safety systems with the incredible amounts of backup, the incredible amounts of training the operators go through. Um, for those of you who haven't watched my previous videos, um, operators go through two years of um, in-depth training of basically how to prevent these sort of accidents. It's, uh, it's fascinating, um, just the amount of effort and resources the nuclear industry does to ensure these things never happen again. But I was very ple pleasantly surprised to see them put these accidents into perspective compared to both renewables and fossil fuels. So, yeah, that was just a very, a very good, very eye-opening video. Very, uh, and the visualizations were just uh, perfect um, in how they did that. So, um, good job on. Uh, on that to uh, Chris Gazan. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you next time.